Hi guys, it's Paul from ISM. Welcome to part 7 of our techniques guide. Um, today I'm going to cover priming. Uh, as you see, I've got various primers out on the desk. I'll run through them quickly in a minute. Uh, the 109's currently as it is. She's all filled, sanded, polished, uh, ready to go. Uh, an absolute nightmare. The flaps keep falling off on me. Um, they're held in by two lugs. They snapped off a long time ago with working on it. Glued in position several times, keep falling off, so if they fall off on camera, I do apologise, but they're currently glued in position. Um, not perfect finished on this, it's not an aircraft I'll have on display once it's done, I've got several 109s already. Like I said all along, I'm only building this for the technique, so I've been using it to, sh to try out various different things for myself. So using various tools to rescribe them, which you know, somehow haven't gone perfect underneath. So it's definitely not a showpiece at all, it's literally... It's a guinea pig for me, and once it's completed, it'll stay a guinea pig as well. Um, so if there's any flaws or what have you, then that's why, because I've been using it for different things. Uh, like I said from the beginning, I've only bought this to show techniques uh, along the way, not to see the finished model. So that's that. So that's ready to go. Uh, one thing we will do, and it's very handy on the Airfix 109, there's gaps either size of the nose, so you can get a pair of tweezers in there and hold it. So we can spray it like that. So I'll just move that to one side. What we're going to do, we'll quickly go through the primers. I've only got the one camera here at the moment, still the ones over in the spray bay, the overhead one. Uh, and then we'll move across to the spray booth and we'll get some primer down. So several different types of primer out there. Um, you've got your generic rattle can primer, which this one's actually an army painter one, which is modeling related, obviously. Um, to me, these are just car paints rebranded, basically. A um, little bit too much, what's the word, power in the spray, uh, you get a massive surface area coverage off one spray. It's a little bit too much for modelling in my opinion, especially I've got a high end spray booth and that thing struggles to keep up with these. You can decant them, um, but I haven't actually used this yet. Um, I got this in the modelling job lot and it's just, it's there, it's full. If I ever need a primer or prime a large surface, it's there, but I certainly wouldn't use it on a smaller model. Just gives too much surface coverage, which the time you do as well, I'll move on to those in a second. So, not something I'll be using uh, soon, but if I was making, say, oh, a diorama base or something along those lines, then maybe I might use this, because like I say, good surface area. As you can see, it has been used before. Uh, you're going to get a lot of coverage off that. Next up, uh, Tamiya Surface Primers. Uh, I've never used these before. I've got a few bottles of them in the, uh, the drawer, what have you. Uh, grey and white, two different size cans. Um, this one's the one I've used recently. I used it on the 1.6 Motocross of the models. Great stuff, very, very nice prime, but again, the, it's a rattle can. The spray's a little bit too powerful for my liking. You, you know, you've got to spray it literally, you know, 12 inches away from the model, which is never brilliant. Um, so, a lot of surface coverage off one spray. So overspray is easy, I can imagine losing detail on the models quite easily with it as well. But it's a very, very good primer, excellent for surface preparation. I mean, I needed a high gloss finish on that uh, motocrosser, and that's why I use this, because it was easy to sand down uh, and get a really good key for the paintwork base coat. So very good. One thing I will try, I'm not going to do it with the armor paint on, but I definitely will use is decanting it into the airbrush. Um, because the finish I got was amazing, and I'm really interested to see what it would be like for an airbrush. It's going to take a lot of cleaning up through an airbrush, uh, probably using cellulose-based uh, thinners, so a lot of, you know, a bit more mucking about than the Vallejos and what have you. Word of warning, and my friend Nige learnt this the hard way, is if you're going to decant it, don't decant it into a bottle and put the lid on, because the vapours are still escaping, expanding and what have you. <laughs> and Nige, um, Nige99 in our forum it is, he decants it into a bottle, put the lid on, um, sat there modelling away in his work office, believe it or not, um, and over time the um, the vapours built, pressure built, and the bottle he put it in exploded, uh, and it went all over the office, his computer, him, his dog, he had his dog in there with him, a grey primer all over it, so don't be decanting into a bottle and put the lid on because it needs to evaporate uh, and what have you. So. I'm really going to try this at some point on a model. I'm going to decant it down. There's a little trick where you can put a straw on there, decant it into your colour cup and what have you, and then airbrush it on. So I am willing to try it later today. Like I say, good size bottles. You know, what size are these? They are 180ml. I think they're about four or five pounds for that one. 
which is probably not going to have the size on it because it's 100 mil and the 181 I think it's a bit dear about eight pounds but they're different colors um there's fine the whites are fine this one's just a normal so obviously you can do get different grades in there as well so they're great and i'm willing to try them as a later date my usual primer uh, i'll get to in a minute actually we'll just get rid of this one this is hero boy zero paints this is for photo etch haven't actually used it yet um Thinking about it, I should have used it on the King Tiger, but I used Alclad on it. I've got a feeling it's going to be exactly the same principle, but with this, you've got a primer uh, and a hardener to go together to create what's going to be a very uh, strong primer, I think. This is going to be highly toxic. Most of the zero paints are based on car paints, the two pack based, which is highly, highly poisonous. So, not something I've you know, always wanted to use, but I got these, I got them for free, if I'm honest. Um, so, I'm not going to complain about getting them for nothing. Um, but I've yet to use them. Whether I actually will, I don't know, but they're there if I ever need to. Anyway, so we'll pop them to one side. My go to primers 90% of the time, no, not 90, line, but 80% of the time, I use Vallejo. Various colours, various size bottles. I've been using this stuff now for, oh, it's got to be coming up to three years now. I uh, absolutely love it. It does take a bit of getting used to, and I know a lot of people out there complain that, you know, it comes off, it sprays horribly, uh, if you sand it, it doesn't feather, it just rips it off. It's got to be sprayed in nice thin light coats, which I'll show in a minute on the 109. If you're going to be sanding it, you're going to leave it for at least 48 hours before you come back to it. The longer you leave it, the better. Um, I've just done my MiG-29 in it. Uh, it was left, I'll admit, for a week because I was ill. Came back, I need to sand a little bit on the nose. Took it off, it feathered beautifully. I've got the picture there as well. Uh, and it did feather very nice. So the longer you leave it, the better. Obviously, you haven't always got that option to do that. And that's where different primers come into it then. But I've used this. Never really had any problem. As long as you don't get it to pull, which is quite easy to do with this stuff. Uh, I've never had a problem in the past. So this is my go-to primer. Various different colours. And Vallejo brought out loads of different base colours now. So you've got Dunkel Galb for German World War II armour. Uh, German red brown which is a camo colour so you know you literally can get your base coats down and the colours required and then add top coats later they do all different colours all the way through but most of the time I used a grey um, and that's it really so they're my go to primers one word of warning in the Vallejo 17mm bottles number 97 is actually labelled as a grey primer it's not a primer it's not a polyurethane primer sorry I'm about the mouthful uh, it is paint and that's been proven on various websites, I think even Vallejo admitted themselves. It's not a primer, it's a grey paint. I used to use this, bottle's very nearly empty, um, thinking it was a primer when I first got back into hobby three years ago. When I learnt it wasn't, I went out and bought the polyurethane. So just bear that in mind if you buy that. Uh, another fantastic primer, um, I'm a massive fan of this stuff is Alkalad. Uh, I love all the Alkalad paints, they're superb. The cellulose based are very, very harmful, hence all the warning labels. Um, it doesn't spray, sorry, it doesn't spray, it doesn't dry as smooth as Vallejo, so it needs a little bit of prep afterwards, but it's a lot more hard wearing, so it's ideal if you're doing a car bodywork, we need a nice gloss shine, or something you're gonna do a lot of weather into, that's why I use it on my King Tiger, because it's such a tough, strong primer. You can spray this and you can touch it in five minutes. It dries super, super quick, but it needs a little bit of preparation if you're going for a perfect um, finish. Also, if you're um, looking to do get a perfect finish, you need to pay attention to the PSIs. They need to be sprayed around, it says 15 PSI on the can, I found it better around 10 or 12. Any higher you start to get rough finishes, which is an absolute pain to get rid of. So bear that in mind, great primers, all different uses, so if I need something quick I use Alclad, so cockpits, a lot of the time I use Alclad just for speed uh, if it's something I'm going to be leaving for a little bit or it's not going to be highly weathered then I'll use Vallejo's so different reasons for using it for different purposes, so there we go, so what we're going to do, we're going to move over to spray booth I'm going to be using Vallejo's grey primer to prime the 109 and we'll get it primed Right, okay, so we're over at the spray booth. Um, like I said, we've got the 109 on tweezers, so we don't have to manhandle it and touch it. I'm uh, going to be using my Hardest Steamback Evolution uh, with the 0.2 needle. We're going to be spraying at, and I'll just adjust my pressure, 25 psi. 
Um, we're going to be using Tamiya's, sorry Tamiya's, Vallejo's Grey Primer, um, polyurethane. Going to go over several light coats, like I say, thin coats. We don't want to be covering the entire model in one go because that's when it pulls. And hopefully we'll get it primed without any fuss or mucking about. So, airbrush has been cleaned. Got a bit of airbrush cleaner. You see me display this on the forum, it's the ultimate modeling products. Airbrush cleaner, fantastic stuff. Works very well with Vallejo as well, and Vallejo can be quite finicky. So, we're going to fill the colour cup. We're just going to put enough in there for now. Put the spray booth on. So, like I say, give you a plain little bit of a spray just there, get rid of any muck. Any residue that's sat around. Pick a point, start there. We're just going to lightly dust the model surface. If I can get it on the other edge, you can see where it's wet. So we're not looking to cover it, we're just looking to get a base coat of dust down and do both wings first. Because as soon as you start to try and cover it, that's when the layer will pull. Just from time to time check your flow, make sure you are you are getting paint. Everywhere, get a thin coat in all the areas required. And hopefully, by the time you've covered most of the areas, you can come back and you can start to go down thicker. You can see on the right hand wing there now, on the left, it's still wet just by the wing root, on the right, it's dried. I've just broken the coat on that. So, as long as you don't flood the area, you can start a bit thicker. I know there's people out there, and I've, I've seen some ridiculous things, people saying, spray a light coat, leave for 10 minutes, come back, and oh, that's just daft. doesn't need to, I'm using it long enough now. You don't need to spray a light coat, leave for 10 minutes, come back, that's just ridiculous. As long as you spray a light enough coat, Leave that area, move on to elsewhere. You can come back a minute later, 30 seconds later. And you can start applying more. So, areas to pay attention to, cockpit canopy. You do not want to be flooding that because it will go through your masking. It will look awful. You also don't want to be getting too thin, uh, thick a coat on there because when you peel the masking off, you'll end up taking the primer with you. Other key areas to notice, anywhere where you put filler, because it's a different colour to the grey, make sure you've covered it. But again, not too thick. Once you've used it a few times, I know people are agreeing with me out there because I've had people on the forum say the same thing. You soon get used to spraying it and it becomes second nature. From time to time, I have a nightmare with it though. Um, can be a bit finicky on certain surfaces and the grey is a little bit too light a grey that's probably my only criticism you can see there there's not much difference between the, the plastic and the actual primer so it's quite hard to sometimes distinguish where you've actually painted so there's the first lock gone okay so, once you're happy you've got a nice even coat down, flip it over and start on the knee. Same as the top, name of the game isn't try and cover all one go, you're just getting a light dusting down. I did spray a little bit too thick myself there. 
this happen. I'm not getting any wheel wells anywhere where there's going to be any surface area that we need to take care of. Throw a bucket on the old airbrush there. There we go. Tight to tight. I see if I can turn this without losing. You see, I've got the two prong attachment, which makes it easy cleaning. You see the way the paint's collected? From time to time, it does do this. Said on the forum the other day, go with a bit of tissue, wipe it off, and just from time to time, periodically, just check it that it's not starting to stick. Because what you get, and you can't see it because it's self leveling, is just there behind that landing gear, there's a speck, can you see it? So all you need to do is a little bit of thin paint over it and it'll just blend in with the rest of the paint when it so like I say just get take a little bit again used to once you're used to it though it really is simple easy I think part of the problem I know a lot of people said about it pulling the masking tape off uh, once you've actually finished priming and what have you I think it is people just spraying it on a little bit too thick there we go, there's in that colour cup. And there we go, so we're in seven minutes. Not one little blast and then a ten minute break taking about 40 minutes for a coat of primer down. Some people are recommending they're not there. There we go, whole air cast primed. A little bit wet in that wing root because it's a little bit thick where I've gone over the, there was a tiny little bit of filler in there. Um, I got to the camera everywhere else. Absolutely perfect. Um, simple. No fuss, and like I say, we're not mucking about spraying a thin coat, waiting 10 minutes to come back, because that's just daft. I've gone all around that, and it's nice, even, all the way around, simple, not a problem at all. So there we go, perfectly sprayed. So I'll leave that now, that'll probably dry overnight. Um, I'll then come back and get the pre-shading done. Um, and then we can come back, um, that'll be part 8, and then we'll come back for part 9, which off the top of my head is... I can't remember now, but we'll get back to it. Quick demonstration of this stuff. Um, some saying it looks like screen wash. It's definitely not screen wash. It's alcohol based because it absolutely just takes all the paint out of the colour cup in seconds. Absolutely fantastic stuff. The spout on it's brilliant, it's the first one I've seen on any modelling products like that. Um, very similar to Vallejo's, but it pops in and out. See it in there. So it's just a case of get your brush in, give it a clean around, around the rim, right down the base. Now, someone's coming to about windscreen wash. I have used it as a cleaner in the past, as I spill this everywhere, not looking what I'm doing. Um, it does work, but it doesn't work very well. Um, it doesn't take everything out. It, what it will do, it will leave remnants in the colour cup afterwards. Uh, we will run through uh, airbrush cleaner later today. It was just basically the way I clean an airbrush quickly, especially between colour changes. And it's just a case of a little bit of cleaner and a bit of a brush, a bit of a black backflow, a bit of a spray into the airbrush part. And that's 90% of it clean, I'll then always pop a little bit more in, give it a little bit of a back flush. And I'm doing this live on camera, I can't do any better or fairer for a new product. So you can see you get the slight discoloration. Whenever you back flow, do not spray that fluid back through your airbrush because if you're picking any particles of paint up from your nozzle, you're sending that back into the airbrush. So always always tip it out and then I'll always leave a bit of fluid in there. But as you can see, fuss free, cleaning, nice and simple. Works a lot better than Vallejo's airbrush cleaner which I've got here somewhere as well. I've got Vallejo's. Um, Vallejo's isn't chemical based. Um, it does work but it doesn't work anywhere near as good as this stuff. Uh, I don't know what's actually in there but I'll say one thing, it works absolutely brilliantly. So you've just seen it work on camera so 
I can't do any fairer test than that. Like I say, I want a later part once we've covered airbrushing, I will cover full um, airbrush cleaning. So we'll go through the ins and outs, taking them to bits. Uh, I'll go through all the various types, eye water and the uh, hardest steam becker I've got, and we'll cover in depth cleaning. But for now, that's us done today. So we're fully primed. We'll come back for part eight and we'll get all the pre shading done. Um, and we'll go from there. So thanks for watching today. Pull from ISM. Uh, take care, and I'll see you soon.